As usual, let's consider the case where we have an example x from a population specified up to some parameters theta. And let's think about the situation where we have an estimator for this parameter theta. And the main question we are looking at is um, the quality of this estimator. How can we measure um, the quality of this particular estimator we have in front of us? We have discussed about the maximum likelihood, likelihood estimator. We will discuss um, in the next video about the base estimator and other options are uh, also. And the point in this lecture is to discuss in general about the quality of an estimator. I will have an example also about the maximum likelihood estimator, but first let's discuss the general idea about um, estimating the quality of an estimator. And so again, we have some unknown parameter and we have some sample. And based on that sample, we, we have an estimator of uh, what the value of theta really is. And, and we would like to quantify somehow the quality of this uh, estimator. And so the situation is like this. We, uh, we do this estimator and um, uh, if I denote by uh, uh, the uh, di, the estimator uh, on some sample xi and, and the situation is so that we can have uh, several different samples and in fact we can have quite many different samples and um, each time we will have a different estimator of this parameter theta. And so kind of visually in, in this figure for each sample we take we will have a different uh, you know, estimator of, of the parameter um, that, uh, theta and by the way theta can be a multidimensional vector. It doesn't have to be just one parameter. It can be a number of parameters in, in theta. In, in the picture here, I'm showing it as if it were a single variable, but it could be in general more than that. But still, I mean, for, for each sample, we have a number of such um, estimations for what the theta is. And so on one hand, we if, if, I, if I show here in, in with, with the red line what the real value of theta is, um, you see, some of these estimations come closer and some of them um, f fall a little bit further away from, from this real value of theta. But the only thing we have is this estimator values. We don't know the real value. And so one reasonable thing to do is to uh, calculate the expected value of this estimator um, and think about how far is it from the real value of, of theta. And that's what we will call bias. How far the expected value of our estimator um, is from the real value of the parameter. So that's one factor we will take into consideration and that's called bias. And obviously we would like our estimator to have bias zero. Um, so that, that's also called to be unbiased, meaning that in average we would like it to fall exactly on theta. But in general it could also be somewhat different uh, from, from theta. So in general you may have a bias. And the other factor we consider is how spread out these estimations of theta are. And, and that's where we talk about the variance of, of our estimator. And I have this here also written down. Uh, so the bias um, of our estimator d for parameter theta is the expected value of the estimator uh, minus uh, theta. And the variance is going to be as usual um, since the estimator is a random variable, it's going to be the, um, the, the variance. So that's going to be the expected value of d minus the expected value of d uh, squared. So, so this is the usual way that variance is, um, is computed. And so I would like to think about some sort of a measure of, of quality, or if I turn it upside down as we did before in some of the other lectures, we can think about the risk of an estimator in terms of how far is it from the uh, real value, or you can talk about the error of, of that estimator. So the mean square error of an estimator d, or if you like, you can also call this the risk of estimator d for parameter theta, is in the same way that we've had before being the mean square error uh, of this estimator is the expected value of how far uh, this estimator is from the real value of theta. So in other words, is the expected value of d minus theta squared. 
and I'm going to open this up for you in just a moment on the next slide. So you don't have to pay attention to this. I'm just anticipating um, how does it look like. Uh, and I'm going to show in just a moment that this um, mean square error of the estimator in general is exactly equal to the uh, uh, power two of, of bias plus the variance. So then we will talk about this kind of uh, um, game between the bias and the variance contributing to the risk or the error of our estimator. So here is, I'm, I'm going to, to just do the calculations to show you that indeed the mean square error of an estimator is exactly bias squared plus variance. And this will go like this. So the risk as we defined it, uh, or the mean square error of an estimator um, with respect to parameter theta, so the real value of parameter theta, is by definition um, the expected value of d minus theta squared. And so in this, when I'm writing this definition like this, the way you should understand it is that theta is a constant. So this is the real value of the parameter, which we, do, we don't know, but it's a, it's a constant. And this is our random variable. And, and this random variable um, depends, obviously, we, we sample this uh, random variable by uh, estimating d for more and more samples x. But so in this formula, theta is the constant and d is the random variable. And so here I'm going to write something. I'm, I'm just going to force something uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to write d minus the expected value of d. And just so that I don't ruin anything, I'm also going to add the expected value of d uh, and it's minus theta squared. And this now is the expected value of and I'm just raising to power two these things as if uh, this was one term and this was the other term. And, and so we have um, the power two of a sum of two terms. So this is going to be the expected value of the first term squ uh, squared. So d minus e of d squared. Um, I'm also writing this one squared. So is the e of d minus theta squared plus two times their product. And so <clears throat> now I continue and I just distribute the expected value. So it's going to be the expected value over the first variable. So expected value of d minus e of d squared plus the expected value of this term plus two times the expected value of this product. And this is now equal to, um, I just copy the first term and I, I will just take this to, to the end. Um, so this one will stay the same throughout our calculations. Plus, you have to realize that what I'm having here is a constant. Because theta is a constant and the expected value of d is a constant. So the expected value of a constant is exactly that constant. So I have here expected value of d minus theta squared plus <clears throat> on the same argument that this is a constant we have that this is two times e of d minus theta times the expected value of um, d minus e of d. And this is now equal to, um, and you have to realize now that when I'm 
going to open this up I will get expected value of d minus expected value of d so this is going to be equal to zero so this term is going to disappear so in the end I have only the first two terms so that's the expected value of d minus e of d squared plus the expected value of d minus theta squared and that's exactly what we defined that is the variance of d and that's exactly bias to power 2. So in the end we get exactly what we announced on the previous slide that the um, risk or the mean square error, error of our estimator d is exactly equal to the variance of the estimator plus the uh, um, power 2 of, of its bias.